Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, this beautiful day. We're gonna keep working on this uh, frame rate independent stuff right here. Now, you gotta watch the old video or the last video before watching this because I explained everything about the multiplier and the DT and the clock and the frame rate, the difference between that. But what I wanna just show you in case you missed it is what we, what the end result is by doing this every time you move something is that no matter what frame rate you have you're gonna get the same consistent amount of movement so that set 60 FPS if I make it unlimited which on my computer is really really high a really high FPS it's still gonna move the same amount no matter what and if I put it at a low FPS at 20 you're still gonna get a nice amount of movement it's gonna look jittery but it's not gonna be slow it's still gonna give you the same amount of movement so every step every frame or every second there will be a different amount of frames and that's what we're accounting for by using this delta time and it's basically the time it takes for a whole frame so we multiply that to and, and you wanna set a frame rate that's good for you like I said in the last video 60 for example you wanna make everything look good at 60 and then you're gonna make sure this gives you the same value as 10 at 60 FPS so we're set at 60, we want it to move at 10 at 60 FPS. We multiply it by DT, first step. That's gonna give us something like 0 0.16, and we don't want, it's too little to move every frame at 60 FPS. So we want it to move at 10, that's why we have a multiplier. So we'll move, multiplier 60, so that gets us back to 10. It kinda goes back to 10, and since we're at 60, it's gonna move at 10, but at any other frame rate, it's gonna scale it. So at 20, it's not going to be 10, it's going to be something else. At 2000, it's not going to be 10, it's going to be something far less. But at 60, we're going to go back to 10. That's the magic. So set a frame rate you like and customize everything and then go ahead and multiply with these things. But what we're going to do today is we're going to remove this. We're going to remove all this stuff. We're going to be working with the same thing, but we're going to be using acceleration. And, and stuff and to show you how that works and to do that we need to write a bunch of code a bunch more of code so that's good we're gonna draw final move we're gonna have drag and we're gonna have acceleration so what do we do guys and girls what do we do we have our shape we're gonna do a vector 2f called current velocity okay we're gonna have a vector 2f called direction we're gonna have a float max velocity we're gonna give that at 60 remember at 60 fps I want the max velocity to be 25 or at any fps actually 25 is, is fine because this is not something we're gonna increase or decrease so this can be constant no matter what what uh, frame rate we're at because we always want to get up to 25 now how much every frame we're gonna change to get up to 25 is what we need to change so float um, acceleration equals we'll say one and then float drag equals 0 0.5 okay so this is how we want it at 60 every time we move we're gonna accelerate by one and the drag that's affecting it is gonna be or we'll say two and the drag is gonna be 0 0.5 we'll say one okay I can't make up on mine but we're good uh, so there we go what do we do well this is how I usually make acceleration in games to not make it look so static to make it kind of smooth you know so I use vectors now this is a directional vector it's gonna show me and it's gonna be normalized from 0 to 1 this is gonna be an actual velocity so this is also a direction but it's a velocity we're gonna use these two together or these two together acceleration and direction to finally get this so hey we're gonna move to the left First, we're going to reset our direction, equals vector 2f, 0, 0, 
Okay, so it's reset. Every frame we reset the direction. Now, which direction is A? Uh, current, no, uh, direction dot x equals minus 1 dot f because to the left is minus 1. That is the direction minus 1 for the vector. We're going to have an arrow pointing this way. That is the size of 1. Okay, now current if current velocity dot x is um, greater than or less than minus max velocity which should be uh, greater than minus max velocity we're gonna do this oh sorry current velocity dot x plus equals acceleration multiplied by direction okay so that's what we're gonna do direction dot x now since we know it's gonna be negative we need to change this if statement okay now we could have done this in another way but this is this is fine for now uh, we're just gonna copy paste this direction is positive for D so this is gonna be fine but we need to change this is less than max velocity we need to change this as well W is gonna be for Y here we don't really have to change anything we're good direction dot Y copy paste this and positive is less than max velocity and then blam, bam okay drag we're gonna set up just now but the final move is just gonna be shape dot move uh, current velocity current velocity dot y and the reason I'm, I'm splitting this up into two and not just writing current velocity is because we're gonna use this later for that delta time and the all that stuff and we're gonna use this here as well now the drag is gonna be like this it's always gonna be working if current velocity dot x is greater than zero dot f uh, and then if current velocity dot x is less than zero point f now why I'm doing this in the same if statement um, I'm gonna tell you so while we are decreasing if we have a current velocity that's positive while we're decreasing it if we go beyond or below zero in the same if statement we're gonna set it to zero because we don't want to get a negative acceleration out of the drag we just want to slow it down to zero so when it's moving to the right it's gonna have a positive velocity we're gonna put it down to zero and if we by mistake go below zero we're gonna set it to zero alright that's the reason for this now current velocity drag drag oh whoops dot x drag and then we're gonna have a else if else if else if it is less than zero we're gonna add drag to it and if it goes greater than zero then we're good we're gonna do the reverse now we're gonna do it for y as well if y why we're just gonna copy paste y everywhere because it's the same thing it's just two different cases for y two different cases for x so there we go now remember we locked it at 60 fps this what the result we're gonna get now is what we want at 60 fps okay see how it's kinda smoothly moving see that smoothly moving and just when I let go it slows down by itself that's smooth movement that's good for like space shooters or whatever like car games or whatever you want to make no matter what you have accelerated movement and at 60 this is what we want okay remember the delta time at 60 FPS for me is let's see what it is now it's 0 0.016 just about somewhere around there okay we we'll remember that uh, DT at 60 FPS is about 0 0.016 seconds okay now every time we we'll multiply by DT we're gonna get this result 
this is going to be multiplied by everything now. So everything that we increase here, or we decrease, or we multiply with, here decrease, add, whatever we're changing, we want to change it by a certain amount. And then at the final movement as well. Okay, so to start off, we want to check this out. Max velocity is 25. We want to add by 1 every acceleration. So when I multiply this with, with dt, what I'm going to get is I'm going to get 1 because this is 1. We're going to add it by 1. So 1 times 0 0.016, what is that? It's 0 0.016. Now, how do we get back to 1? Okay, how do we get back to 1? We use our calculator. We say 1 multiplied by 0 0.016. I know I don't have to do this. 0 0.016. Now, what is 1 divided by 0 0.016? 60. Just about 60. So we're going to multiply it by our multiplier, which is 60. All right, to get back to 1. And that is what it's going to do at 60 FPS because we're locked it here. This is how we want it to look. 60 FPS is going to be at 1 using this. Now we can just multiply everything with this. No problems. Just like that. That's going to be fine. Drag, the same thing. Drag is 0 0.5. Now when we multiply 0 0.5 with 0 0.016, we got 0 0.08. Now how do we get to 0 0.05? Multiplied by 60 is going to give us about 0 0.5. So our multiplier at this frame rate is working for us, just the way we want it. We'll do the same thing. We'll do the same thing right here. Everywhere. Okay, we can basically just do this everywhere. We can do this here as well. Okay, because that is going to, in the end, give us what we want. Now when we run this at 60 FPS, it should look like normal. It is looking like normal, just regular. All right. When we remove the frame rate limit, if we did everything correctly, it's going to move the same amount. It's moving the same amount, although a lot less jittery because we're not locked at 60 FPS. If we go low, we're still getting that accelerated movement, but everything, every step, every frame is doing a lot more. Every frame, those floats are a lot bigger, but there are a lot less frames per second. So we're getting the same movement. See how it's 0 0.05 now, the delta time? And if I remove the frame rate limit again, let's see how small the delta time is. The delta time is 0 0.0002 something at an unlimited frame rate. Frame rate. <laughs> which is about like 600 frames or 1000 frames or something, I'm not sure, but something like that. But if you work at 60 to start off with or any frame rate you like and make the game look just the way you want with these values, then you can use the multiplier and the delta time at that frame rate to make it look, to make it go back to this value at that frame rate. Then you'll kind of lock it. And that's how you want to work. Anything where you're scaling stuff or adding stuff every frame and then at the end when you're moving stuff you want to just go ahead and and use this and you're like why do I have to use it here when I already changed this with delta time everywhere blah 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 but it's not the same thing it's not the same thing all right it's not good if you're gonna move it by this amount without these things here you're gonna still get a different amount of movement every frame even though you took care of all of these values here and stuff, it's not going to matter. It's still going to give you a weird value. If we do that, if we do that, at 60 it's going to work. Let's see if it does. Let's see if I'm completely wrong. This is at 60 frames per second. Okay. If we remove this frame rate limit, what's going to happen? Of course it's going to work at 60. It's going to go to hell. Okay, it went straight to hell, bro. Straight up fucking hell. Because we didn't change the amount it actually moves every frame. You gotta take care of that as well, because these numbers are gonna get so big, you gotta take care of this as well. 
uh, but yeah, I hope you learned something. I hope this is really important, guys and girls. You gotta learn this. You have to learn this and start using this from the very beginning. You start coding games, very beginning to really nail it down with everything because this is gonna really make sure you can sell your games. You can actually sell your games after doing this. You know, you don't have to lock them to a frame rate. You can sell your games. Anyone can play them on their computers, basically. At least when it comes to frame rate. So. Yeah, thanks for watching, take care, and I hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next video, alright? Bye-bye.